Hi guys, I've been asked a couple of questions about my rubber band powered cars. Uh, two particular questions I'm going to try and answer. One is can I fit a launch mechanism, uh, basically a, a button that you can push that releases the car and lets it run rather than having to hold it like I am at the moment, hold the back wheel. And the other question is about fitting a brake. Now I'm assuming that what we're talking about is a brake that will stop the car after a certain distance. So I've had a little think and I've got a couple of ideas. So I shall fit them to this car and show what I've done when I've done it. If I was doing it from scratch I might do it a slightly different way but um, I'll do it as a modification to this car. Right, the simplest way I can think of fitting a launch mechanism to this car will be to drill a hole through the back axle, because it's a nice thick axle, and have a little peg that well, it will be in a loop shape. When you push down on it, it will actually drop out the bottom of the axle. So the idea is you wind the axle up, fit this peg in place, and then when you want to go, you just push the top of the peg it will drop out the bottom of the axle and the car will move forwards. So we'll try that first. Right, I just happen to have some rather nice, very big paper clips. So I've just drilled a hole in the end of this piece of wood that's the right size for the paper clip. And the idea is got to cut the paper clip but I'll cut this piece of wood the paper clip will go right up through it and it'll curve round at the bottom like this and the other side of it where I cut it off will go up through a hole in the back axle here so that I can push down on the top of this paper clip and it will drop out the bottom of the axle. It will become clear in a minute. I'm using wood so I can glue it onto the um, stub here so it all fits in quite nicely. Right, that's the mechanism, the plunger. All it is is a bent piece of wire which I've made from a big paper clip piece of wood that I've drilled a hole right the way through so that goes up and down in there and I've taken another little piece of wood and drilled a hole part of the way through it so I can use that as the button on the top. Next thing to do is to drill a suitable hole in the axle and glue that in position and then all I should need to do is wind it up Moment. push the peg up from underneath and then when I want it to go just push down and that should release it. Right, I've drilled a hole in the back axle there now. It's a much bigger hole than it needs to be so that the plunger will be a loose fit in it. It will be held in place by the tension on the rubber band. Right, for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to hot glue this in place. If I was doing this permanently, I'd actually use proper wood glue, so it, it's going to be a bit more robust. But I'll use hot glue just for now, just to get it going. Right, so wind my motor up a little bit. Don't need to go too far for demonstration purposes. So we can see what happens. That goes in there. The tension of the rubber band holds it in place. And then when we want to release it, we should be able to just poke that down. And away we go. I had to catch it because it's on the uh, table. I don't want it shooting off on the floor. So that works. That's nice and simple. 
wind it back off a bit. Push it in the hole. Let the rubber band hold it. And release. So, that's an easy release mechanism. I might even colour that in red so I can see it easily. Right, the next question was some sort of braking mechanism to stop it after a certain distance. And what I pr propose to do this time is I'm going to put another axle across the front here with a because I happen to have one, a cotton bobbin or reel, and that's going to hold some string, and this, the other end of the string will be attached to the back axle. This will be free running, and I'll wind up the amount of string I want on it to begin with, and then as the axle turns as the wheel goes forwards it'll pull the string off this bobbin and when it's pulled all the string off the end of the string is actually tied to this bobbin so that should stop the back axle turning because it can't pull any more string off so I'll have to drill a hole in my chassis put an extra little axle across just to hold that Again, if I was doing this from scratch at the beginning, I wouldn't do it this way, but that's how I'm going to do it on this modification. Right, I've drilled a couple of holes there and there. Got a nice bit of garden cane here, which is actually a bit too big, so I'm going to have to enlarge those holes a little bit. anyway. And then mount the bobbin on there. And that'll be the brake. Right, I've wound up my rubber band a bit and put my launch mechanism in place. I can see that. Probably. Okay, so the launch mechanism is holding the rubber band tension. I now need to wind up my brake. I've had to shorten this length of string quite a lot because we can't go very far in my kitchen and actually show that the brake works. So that comes round and it wraps round the back axle in the opposite direction. Because it's wound up by the wheels travelling forwards. So hopefully you can see that now. So that's that's going round the axle in the opposite direction to the rubber band. So now Put that where we can see it, yep. And press the release mechanism. And there you are. It stops automatically if we go up there and have a look. So the string is now wound round the back axle and released from the bobbin. Well, it's not released, it's still tied to it, that's why it acts as a brake. But it's unwound from the bobbin and wound up around there. So there we have a launch mechanism and a brake. So I hope that answers a few questions. Just see if we can do this a little bit closer up. Unwind the brake so it's now hanging free. The 
rubber band connect to the back axle wind it up I'm not fully tensioning it because we're only going in my kitchen so we don't need to go very far now try and clip that into the hole release the rubber band a little bit and that holds the tension then wind the string round the bobbin connect that to the back axle in the opposite direction ah, I arranged that so that peg should be on the top so I need to release that Turn it around a little bit further. Yeah, that's better. Just makes it more convenient so you can actually see that. So, tension that up again. So, there we go. And the idea is as the rubber band unwinds and the wheels turn, that's winding up the string onto the back axle until it's taken all the string off the bobbin, but it's actually tied to the bobbin, so at that moment in time it acts as a brake. So, put it over there a bit, press the release mechanism. It stops. So there we go. Success. I hope that helps somebody.